Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Now that we are able to generate geometry using the content tools, we need to send the data back to the level editor so that it can be processed further and saved to an asset file. In this video, I'll finish the last part in the C++ side that's needed to pack and send the data to the C Sharp side. Before writing pack data, I'd like to go ahead and correct some mistakes that I made before and some typos in the code. Here in this function, create plane, I made a typo here. For the vertical step, we should divide by vertical count instead of horizontal count. And also I forgot to add a UV set to the array of UV sets before adding UV coordinates to it. And if you would run this code, it would of course crash. So first we need to add a UV set to this array and then place new elements in it. You can see that it's a double array. There is a vector of a vector. This resize function adds a new element to the UV sets, and then we can use that to put these UV coordinates in it. Next in geometry, the tangents should be a four dimensional vector. And in geometry CPP, I would like to rename a couple of variables here. For example, I have a value that represents the cosine of the angle between normals. And in my explanation, I called this cosine of theta. So I'm going to rename this to cos theta. And the cosine of the smoothing angle was alpha in my explanation. So I'm going to rename this to alpha. I also forgot to explain this part because the smoothing angle is the angle between the faces and here we are dealing with the angle between the normals. We need to convert this angle to an angle that's perpendicular to the plane of a triangle and that we can do by simply subtracting from pi because these angles will be in radians. We can just convert to a radian and by subtracting from pi, we effectively rotate this angle by 90 degrees. And the last fix that I would like to do is one that was brought to my attention by Scott Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Hunt, for letting me know in the engine API. Here, the idea was that when we define this macro, it will exclude some less frequently used Windows headers because if you open this header file, you can see that there's often other includes in there. So when we would define win32 lean and mean, then it would exclude these. So the idea was that a lot of other header files would get excluded from the build. But then I went ahead and made a mistake here by typing mean and lean instead of lean and mean, and that doesn't have any effect, obviously. So I need to fix this. And also I made the same mistake here in platform types. Okay, now I get an error and that's because the header where this LP safe array is defined is no longer included in my build. So I need to include that header explicitly. And now it again recognizes this type. And that's pretty much all I wanted to do for fixes for now. So let's close these. 
and then finally start writing pack data function. But before writing this, I would like to take some time and explain what we actually are going to return in this scene data, because we are basically going to fill in a binary buffer with everything that we got from our vertex processing, our scene processing. Now, as you can see here, we have this processed scene and that resulted in a scene with a name which is optional, some objects which we called lot groups and each lot group can also have a name and one or more meshes and this is basically what we pack into this binary buffer and pass it to the c -sharp WPF side. And in the future, of course, some additional information can also be in here, like if we import a model with animations and skeletons and those kind of things, then we can also include those here. And when we pass this to the level editor side, we are going to have asset classes that represent this particular kind of asset. So in this case, we have the geometry asset that we created or imported from a file. And when we pass it to the level editor, there is this geometry asset that will be able to save it to an asset file. And if it also contained other information like animation and skeletons, then those type of asset classes will be instantiated by geometry assets as well. And in turn, they will save their data to the asset file. So these asset files will be referenced by the components that an entity has. For example, a geometry asset can be used in the geometry component of an entity. And the texture asset can be used by material assets because materials are a collection of textures and shader code. So that's my plan. And now we can go back to the code and write our function. In geometry CPP, like we did for process scene, we can write pack data function here. And the first thing I'd like to know is how much room in memory I need to put all those data in. So we need to measure the size of the scene. So we need to write a function that gets the size of the scene in bytes for us. So we can reserve memory for putting our data in there. Because a lot of elements or data members that we are going to save are of type U32, I am going to just put the size of a U32, which is four bytes in this constant, so I can reuse that. This is the size of our scene, and I'm just going to add to this size everything that we need to save. If we go back to our drawing, you can see that the first thing that we need to save is the name of the scene. So we need to have room to put the number of characters and also the characters themselves. So here we need to have room for an integer. And also the name itself. And after that is the number of LODs. And then we go through each of the lot groups and calculate their size. So the first thing in each lot group that we want to put in this buffer is how many bytes go in the name of the LOD and the characters in the name of the LOD themselves and how many meshes are in there. And after that, we go through each mesh and calculate how much room we need for those. Here we need another function that will figure out how much space in memory we need for one of these meshes.
Here I'm getting the number of vertices and then determine how big the vertex buffer size should be. And also here we figure out how big our indices are. So if the number of vertices would fit in a 16-bit integer, then we need indices that are not bigger than two bytes or a 16-bit integer. And if we have a lot of vertices, more than 64K, that wouldn't fit in a two-byte integer anymore. So we need a U32 for that. And after that, we can compute how big the index buffer should be, which is the size of our indices times how many indices we have. Here we can put anything that we want to include in our mesh buffer. You can see here that in a mesh we put the length of the name of the mesh and the name of the mesh, mesh ID, vertex size, number of vertices, etc. So those are all the things that we either have access to via the mesh structure or we just calculated in the beginning of this function. And this is all we have to do to get the size of a mesh and therefore our scene. So going back here, we have the scene size now, and then we can reserve memory for that. In our scene data structure, we need to assign the pointer to our allocated memory in this buffer and give it the buffer size so that we can pass it to the level editor and the level editor will know how much data it should read from this buffer. Here I'm using cotask memalloc function to allocate some memory. Technically, I could allocate memory by using malloc or new, but because I want the level editor to be in charge of freeing the memory, I'm going to use this function because the same implementation of a memory allocator should be in charge of allocating the memory and freeing up the memory. And because we can't guarantee that by using malloc, while deallocating it in C sharp, we can't use that. And I'm going to use cotask memalloc, which has a uniform allocator for all com based processes in Windows operating system. And now we have to include the header for this. Here we can read all about this function, but we need this part com based api.h. And I'll include that one here in tools common. And then I assert that this allocation was successful. Now we need to actually write everything that we need into this buffer. And the order is of course the same as we did here to get the size of the scene. So we start by putting the length of the name in the first integer and then put the characters of the name of the scene next and so on. This is a reference to our buffer and we have a write header. So basically this is an offset into this array. And every time we write something in this buffer, then we need to move this write pointer to the next location. So we don't overwrite anything. And this is just a temporary variable that I can use as a source for all U32 member variables that I want to write to this buffer. So let's start by the scene name. Mm -hmm. 
Here I write the value of s, which is the number of characters in the name of the scene, to the first four bytes of this buffer, and then move the header to the next four bytes. And then I'll write the characters of the name themselves. So I know that we need to write as many bytes to this buffer, and then we move the value of at by this many bytes again. Then we write the number of LODs. And then to fill in the name of the LOD, it's pretty much the same as we did for the scene name, except that we now use this LOD. Next is the number of meshes, and then we go through all the meshes and write their data into the buffer. Now for that, I'm going to write a new function that will write the mesh data into this buffer at this location. Note that we now have a reference to this at offset so that we can change it in the calling function. Again, we write the name of the mesh like we did for the scene and LOD. Okay, now I'd like to write this load ID, which I accidentally called mesh ID in my explanation. And that's to group all meshes that belong in the same LOD together. And then I fill in the vertex size, which is just the size of this vertex static structure, 32 bytes. Next is the number of vertices. Here we just do a binary copy of everything that's in this array of vertices to our buffer. And then we do the same for the index buffer. Uh, 
Remember that our indices here are 32 bit and depending on how many vertices we have, we would like to use 16 bit indices or 32 bit indices. And in the case of 16 bit indices, we need to convert this array, which is 32 bit to a 16 bit array. So when we call this function, it will allocate some memory that will be big enough for our data or our scene. And then we can write everything that we need in there and pass it to the level editor. Now, one more thing that I need to do is to actually put these functions to the anonymous namespace that we have here so that they can't be accessed from outside this translation unit. Next time, I'm going to write an import function for the create primitive mesh function and also create the geometry asset class, which will accept the data that we generated and write it to an asset file. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus, there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.